Meantime, preliminary results are in for Washington's primary election, and we're seeing very low turnout right now. Just about 20% of voters turned in their ballots, and most of those, we understand, ages 65 and older. We're going to bring in now our Fox 13 political analyst, Republican strategist Randy Peppel, and Kathy Allen on the Democratic side, live in studio to break some of this down for us. Good morning to both of you once again. Great to have you Good here morning. this morning. So let's uh, talk about the Seattle City Council. We have three incumbents that are moving on to the general election in November, and we're going to have four new council members taking seats in uh, contested races for that council come November. Now, Seattle Mayor Bruce Harrell, he has taken a pretty hard line on cleaning up the city. He's a former council president. He knows how to play the game. Uh, how much is the new mayor and, and Harrell's reign uh, taken on the makeup of the council? Because it's definitely changing. It's definitely changing, and his invisible hand in a lot of these races is, is obvious to a lot of us in terms of some of the people that he prefers. All of them are going on to the general election, and none of them really include any incumbents. He's only endorsed officially one. But the one thing that was interesting to me is that you see that the mayor continues to have strong, over 50% approval ratings, where this council was down to like 31, 33%. The fact is, is that the council was taking the heat for all of the lack of progress on big important problems. The fact is, is that the mayor's numbers are good and he is probably going to be the guy with experience that most of the people on the council listen to. And the reality is anytime you have this type of turnover on a council, it gives the executive more power. And Sarah Nelson, who's only been on the council for two years, is the only one of the nine members of this very dysfunctional body that is going to be back for certain next January. There are going to be at least four newcomers, but you've got incumbents in trouble. I mean, uh, Dan Strauss is at 51%. That is the high water mark for the incumbent members of the council. And uh, so I think you're going to see a lot of turnover, and that's going to play well into Bruce Harrell's hand. How does he play that card? Does, it, do, does he focus more on public safety, Is uh, cleaning out homeless encampments? Or does he actually look at fiscal policy and try to get the city's fiscal ship in order? I mean, those are the questions that uh, Mayor Harrell's going to have to face with a council that is far more likely to go along with him than fight with him like the current one. Let's talk about the big national news. Former President Donald Trump indicted for a third time for attempting to subvert his election loss. Now, his legal troubles continue to mount, but his support among his base seems to be unaffected. Why? The reality is if you already know what you think about Donald Trump, I mean, whether you're a Republican, Democrat, Independent, you know what you think about Donald Trump. One more indictment is not going to make you like him more or dislike him more. And that's the sad reality of where we're at in our politics today, is that this is by far the most serious of the three indictments. Had it come first, maybe things would be a little bit different. But the Democrats and the media, frankly, have overplayed charges against Trump for far too long. And so now it's a collective whatever from the populace, even though these are very serious charges. And when it comes, though, to Seattle and uh, Washington State, we've already done our exclamation, um, I would say, point about Trump. This is not a pro-Trump state. It's only, it's, uh, I would say, a core group of 18, I think, percent, whatever this is. What you see here, uh, if anything, what bothers me about the presidential campaign right now is the fact that Trump on the ballot and Biden, who is not the most popular, although he's very endearing, the fact is, is that I worry about turnout. I worry that people are going to say oh, a pox on all their houses. And actually, I worry more about that than I do his impact individually with those indictments. So with, with, with all of this, you know, at the four and possibly a fourth indictment coming down in the near future, is Trump going to be the Republican nominee? Well, t t talk to me once we start actually voting next February. You, I mean, look, the, you look at the polls and the, it looks the, like the, he, he's going to yes, win in a landslide. But uh, the polls at this point in 2015 had Jeb Bush as the runaway leader. So polls in the summer before primaries start are fickle. That said, yes, something significant would have to happen, but significant things often do in politics. And, yeah, and frankly, that's what rational Republicans are hoping for. Nobody in their right mind wants to see a rematch of Biden-Trump in 2024. 
I mean, that is just too depressing for words. <laughs> one, one point about that is, you know something, we are just as unsure about Biden being the actual nominee. So in terms of all this, it's a lot more fluid than you would think. Kathy Allen, Randy Peppel, thanks so much for your time. Appreciate Thank you. it. Maria, over to you.